Hey guys, what's up? This is Tom from TDD Tom's Tech Time. Actually, right now I'm watching a film with my FPV goggles and I wanted to introduce you into the waypoints feature, but I haven't got all day for you guys because I was already filming four introductions today and uh, yeah, the all these features got just released by today and I am kind of tired by this time of the day and so just watch the episode and don't forget to click at the subscribe button. Stay tuned. <laughs> Before we get into the usage of the new waypoints feature, let's first off do a short tech spec check. First off, how did the waypoints feature look like on the Phantom 2 series and what has changed for the Phantom 3? Next we want to figure out if there are any limitations built into the Go app affecting the waypoints feature and finally I am then going to demonstrate how to use the new waypoints function. As promised, we firstly want to throw a look at how the waypoints function looked like at the Phantom 2 model. Let's just throw a look at an older tutorial of mine for one second only. Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TDT Tom's Tech Time. Today I want to show you something very special. It's all about DJI's ground station flying with waypoints. This is what I want to show you today. Uh, you just simply tap on the map and the copter flies on its own. Okay, I can already now tell you that things have changed dramatically. The Phantom 3 waypoints feature does not allow the copter to fly a route that you entered before by simply tapping at the map. To set a route you now have to fly that route and in flight set waypoints manually. After that flight you then are able to refly and save that route. On the one hand side people are pretty disappointed because they cannot simply tap at the map and let the copter do its thing anymore, but on the other hand side this new waypoints feature offers a very high creative value and adds more safety to the flights. And next to that DJI enable different camera modes for the waypoints feature which I must say I really like as a filmmaker. Now how about some limitations? Creativity unleashed? Okay at least almost. The new waypoints feature allows you to operate within a maximum radius of 500 meters. Within the radius you can set a maximum of 99 waypoints. The distance between the single waypoints has to be minimum 5 meters and maximum 500 meters. And finally the total travel distance or path length is limited to 5 kilometers maximum. So first of all we have to enable the multiple flight mode and we can simply do that by tapping at the quadcopter symbol at the upper left hand side of the screen. Now we tap at advanced settings and simply tap at the slider until that turns green. And now if we go back we can of course set a maximum flight altitude but I would recommend leaving this on 120 meters. This is absolutely fine for most situations. Of course you could raise that up to maximum 500 meters and uh, that way you could uh, fly a waypoints course at a height of 500 meters. But I would recommend leaving that on 120 meters as I said and right now let's just get into the flying. So now let's just take off and there we go. The copter is up in the air. 25 meters is fine. And now how to activate the waypoints. Pretty simple at the upper left hand side of your remote controller you will find um, a switch and we can switch the modes and we are now going to switch the modes from the P mode to the F mode. F stands for function by the way. And if we do so the intelligent navigation menu pops up with course lock, home lock, point of interest, follow me and waypoint. And we right now want to tap at waypoint and now we can choose uh, whether we want to create a new mission or we want to fly a favorite mission of ours and we're going to tap at new mission. And right now there is a hint of mine, set the first point right on top of the home point to avoid a crash that could occur uh, while the Phantom travels towards the first point otherwise and is still raising height. So let's just record the first waypoint right on top of our home point. I tap record C1. And right now we can simply move around, fly around and uh, if we want to set a waypoint somewhere we simply tap at the map, set record and uh, maybe I can't even see the copter. Oh, there it is. Maybe over here, a little to the right. Let's set a waypoint here by tapping at record. And by the way, if you want to delete um, the last waypoint, you simply tap at delete C2. And that deletes the last waypoint. And I can now again tap at record. 
Now it has set the point again. And the last one again, record. And now we can tap at done if we think we're good to go. And right now we're getting another menu. And first off, we have to choose a heading, which means we have to choose between consistent with record, consistent with root or free. This is actually talking of how the copter moves and uh, consistent with record means that the copter tries to fly as smooth as possible. And if it does so, you can probably use the entire shot um, in a video that you later on create. If you tap at consistent with root, the copter then is going to fly the root um, very harsh. It's simply going to turn and it's going to rotate very harshly if it hits one waypoint. And finally, you could of course tap at free which would mean that the copter um, then flies the root and you can yourself rotate the copter in air and uh, simply you move it yourself. But I'm going to tap it consistent with record. This is pretty cool. Next off, we have to decide whether we want the copter to hover or return to home at the end of the flight. I'm going to let it hover at the end of the flight. And finally, we can, of course, set a speed and 3.5 meters per second is fine. But actually, I'm going to lower this a little because my flight path is uh, not really really big. It's a very very uh, s small flight path and right now let's just tap at apply and now we have to set a return to home altitude for the case of a low battery return to home or something else. Of course you should think of any obstacles that could be in your way and we want to avoid crashes but 40 meters is fine in my case. So I'm going to tap at apply and now it uploads the waypoints and after that it starts the mission. As you can see right now, it moves towards the first waypoint. And by the way, if you would like to record footage, uh, meanwhile, you could always tap at hide and then you could simply tap at record or you could take a photo or whatever you like. And if you then want to return to the um, waypoint menu, you simply tap at this icon up here. Of course, you could always pause the mission by simply tapping at pause which means that the copter then is going to hover in air. But let's just continue the flight. There it goes. We can always tap at the map as well and zoom in a little. And we can see the copter moving. And let's just get back to the live view. Pretty exciting, actually. And now the copter has finished the mission. And right now, if we tap exit, this actually finishes things up. But we could again tap at waypoint right now and click at favorite missions. And now it has saved this last mission. This one. And if we want the copter to fly that route, we simply activate it, tap at apply. And now again, we can choose whether we want uh, the copter to move consistent with record, consistent with root or free. Now let's just tap at, I don't know, consistent with root, just for example. And after that, we could say return to home. And uh, the speed, we could just raise that a little and apply again, return to home altitude, apply. And now the carpet is again going to fly the very same route. And of course you can do that months later or whenever you want to. This is pretty cool. Sometimes this happens as well, probably because this is the first version of this app. Maybe it works right now. Yes, it works right now, simply. Give it a retry if things fail at first. Now you can again see the copter moving. And right now it starts the mission. Off we go. Uh, right now you can see how differently it behaves. Because it behaves um, much harsher. Not that smooth. Not that, I don't know, cinematic. Uh, now the battery runs out. That always happens, right? When you try to present something. And now things have worked out perfectly. As you can see, now the copter is about to land and I'm going to cancel this by simply tapping at the X and tapping OK. And if you now want to land your copter manually, you simply toggle the switch again back to the P mode. And now you are good to go and are in charge, in control yourself. And right now I can land the copter myself. And uh, this was already it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching this short freaky tutorial of mine. It was a pleasure to tell you how things work 
And actually, if you want to support my channel, please leave a donation via tomstechtime.com slash donate. You can uh, leave a donation via PayPal that way. Would be awesome if you would subscribe, leave a thumb up and, uh, I don't know, a nice comment or something. And you can contact me and my awesome community at facebook.com slash group slash Tom's Tech Time. This was Tom from TDD Tom's Tech Time over and out. Stay tuned. Fly safe.